Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. This time of year, every year, we get a lot of questions about the rights of students living in the dorms on college campuses. And it's, it's really an interesting situation. You know, on the one hand, you have lots of freedom, you know, especially if you're new to dorm life. It, it's wonderful to be away from your folks and to be away from, from, you know, your brothers and sisters that might be tattling on you. And so, you know, on the one hand, you have all of this freedom. But then what you discover quickly as well is that you don't actually have a lot of privacy. You've got a roommate right there that maybe you're getting used to. You've got an RA down the hall that, you know, might be cool, might not. You don't even know yet. Um, you've got campus security that are, you know, different from one campus to the next, and so you never really know what you're dealing with. It takes a second to get used to it. And um, what happens, I think, is a lot of folks get excited about their newfound freedom, but it's easy to get carried away with that, and you can make some, some mistakes. And um, it's also easy with so many other students around, people partying and enjoying themselves, that you, you could end up getting in trouble for something that someone else did. So you got to watch your back, and you definitely have to know your rights when you're living in the dorms. I loved dorm life myself. I had a great time. Um, but I also saw a lot of people get in trouble, and so I, I think it's a situation that you want to give some thought to and be prepared. I actually worked as a judicial advocate uh, myself when I was in college, which meant that I represented students who were accused of misconduct violations on campus. So, you know, it was sort of my responsibility to learn the student conduct code, understand all the rules, and then help folks who maybe got a little bit jammed up just to make sure that their rights on campus were respected and that people weren't punished unfairly. So I learned a lot about what the, what the campus environment is like and how rules are enforced on campuses, but it varies from one place to the next. And so that's really the first lesson. When it comes to knowing your rights on a college campus, it's something that I can't just sit here and spell out for you. The reality is that you have to look on the, at the specific policies that exist on the campus where you're going to school. And so, you know, how the rules are enforced and what the penalties are and what, what kind of behaviors are tolerated or not tolerated is going to vary from one place to the next. So I can't just enumerate those for you. So you need to do some of that research on your own. And then your specific rights living in the dorm, that's another thing that's going to vary from one campus to the next. So you want to look at your rental agreement, you know, look at what you're signing, and then you can understand, you know, the basics of what to expect. So you may have have specific, you know, a specific threshold of protection in the event that an RA or a security officer wants to come into your room. So you need to know that because if you get into a situation where somebody wants to come in and you don't want them to, knowing the rules and be able to articulate yourself clearly is going to really help you in that situation. So that's really the first thing. Um, regardless, however, of what the specific school policies are about dorm rooms and what your specific uh, rights may be, you're still going to want to handle an encounter um, in your space in the same way that you would anywhere else, even off campus. So for starters, if they ask to search your room, you're always going to want to say no. Now, you want to be very polite here, but let them know, you know, listen, if you have the authority to search the room, I, I'll be cooperative, but I'm not agreeing to be searched. And that's sort of the same way you'd handle that situation um, off campus as well. You know, the same goes for answering incriminating questions. You never want to incriminate yourself. You don't want to admit to something that can get you in trouble. And so if, if they're being persistent, you want to say that I'd like some kind of legal representation um, before discussing that matter with you. Thank you very much. And um, of course you don't want to let anyone in if there's something that you don't want them to see. And you now this gets tricky on a college campus because the room doesn't belong to you. You know, it, it belongs to the school. So if it's a, a state school, it belongs to the state. If it's a private school, it belongs to the trustees. And so, you know, in, in either case, uh, somebody else may have the keys to your room. Other people have a way of getting in. But as long as you're not the one just letting them in, you know, that situation could end up protecting you. And if, if you are accused of some type of misconduct on campus, you know, you're either going to get arrested by, by actual law enforcement if they're present, or you're going to get uh, have a charge filed against you by the campus security, in which case you'd appear before some sort of a, a judicial board on campus. And in, in either case, there's rules of evidence, and they have to, to, to prove that that they legitimately caught you doing whatever it was that you did. And so if any rights of yours were violated, that's something that you can use to protect yourself. So, so keep all of that in mind and, and know the policies on your campus. And then this is another thing you want to talk to the people around you and find out how those policies are enforced. And so that's kind of the long and short of it. 
But I have a few other items I just wanted to cover based on my experience actually helping students who got in trouble on campus. I want to share just a couple of sort of practical tips that aren't really, not really know your right stuff per se, but things that I think will help you if you're worried about, about how to keep yourself out of trouble in, when you're in school. Number one is just to keep in mind that people talk, you know. You're, you're packed into that dorm room, you know. Your neighbors might be able to hear you talking through the walls, you know, you're chattering in the bathroom. It's just really hard to keep your business to yourself, so be careful. And if you don't make an effort to, to protect your own privacy, neither will anyone else. So if, if you're chattering a lot, other people will assume that you don't really care about your privacy and they'll be happy to share your private information with, with other people. So keep in mind, people can hear what you're doing, they can smell what you're doing, so pe people know what you're up to. And so make careful choices about, about what, what you reveal about yourself to other people because they won't always have your best interests in mind. Um, number two, you know, keep in mind that, that college is as much about relationships as it is about rules. So you want to know your neighbors, know your RAs, and, and suddenly everybody's got your back, you know, and you can re relax just a little bit. You know, it's scary at first being around all these strangers, but ultimately there's usually some flexibility when something bad happens. And so knowing the people around you will help you sort of negotiate your way out of trouble or avoid it entirely. Number three is just to keep your place clean. You know, it's really not my business, but uh, you know, college dorms are unspeakably nasty places, and the reality is that if your place is a dump, you don't know what's in there. So you don't want to get busted for a bong that some hippie left behind your bunk bed. So that's that, you know, straightening up after yourself, it just, it protects you. I know that, that you're in college and it's nice not to have anybody looking over your shoulder. When it comes down to it, if you end up in a situation with security in your room and it's a big mess, that says to them that there might be something to find if they dig around. A clean room sends a better message to security and it makes it easier for you to get anything out of there if you need to or just to know what's there in the first place. Number four is just is to watch out for random inspections or fire drills, other kinds of patterns and events that happen on college campuses. And this is going to vary from one place to the next. But, you know, at my school, for example, I had some buddies who were smoking pot in a dorm room one night, and the fire alarm goes off. Boom, boom. So they're freaking out, throwing everything, putting things away and all of that. And they head outside to where all the other residents are, are gathering. And the hall director comes out and points him out and brings him back inside. What had happened was that he smelled it, but he didn't know what room it was coming from. But as hall director, he had the authority to go ahead and just yank the fire alarm. And uh, so he used that. And then as a result of that, he had to, uh, to check each room to make sure everyone got out safely. See, this is the protocol there. So there's all these kinds of rules on campuses that the authorities can bend. And they, they know what they're doing. You know, you're, you might be new to the campus, but the people that are enforcing the rules aren't. And so they have a lot of tricks and techniques. And so you don't want to be the person that learns that the hard way. You know, usually the first month of school on every campus, there's a couple of people that, that get jammed up. And that's how everyone learns. So don't be that person. Pay attention to what happened when other people got in trouble and you can better understand the patterns of behavior so that you can protect your own rights and those of your friends. And finally, uh, and maybe the most important thing of all is just to make good decisions. You know, obviously you should have as much fun as you can in college, but also have fun as safely as you can. You know, I saw some people get really hurt when they were just trying to have a good time, and it's a, a shame when that happens. And in a larger sense, when, when bad things are happening, if people are getting injured at parties and things like that, there's a tendency for, for schools and universities to react very negatively to those instance, incidents. And so rule, new rules can pop up. Parties can get cracked down on. All kinds of bad things happen if, if students aren't looking out for each other. And so just watching each other's backs, making sure that people aren't getting hurt, making sure that people aren't getting into bad situations is the best way to, to maintain sort of free and open policies on campus and make your life more enjoyable. So I hope this was helpful to you. We have lots more information on our website at flexyourrights.org. And as always, all of our videos are available for free on YouTube, so you can check those out right here. But our best videos are also available uh, in hard copy on DVD if you'd like to order those through our website and make a small donation. We really appreciate your support. Obviously, everything's available for free, but those of you who can afford to, to support us, it really does help a lot. So thank you very much, and be safe.